this talk this presentation is about procur procuration to prostitution under ipc it involves section 366 366a 366b 372 and 373 of the indian penal code so let's begin what is the what is section 366 it talks about kidnapping abducting or inducing women to compel for marriage etc this is the exact definition of section 366 and it talks about kidnapping and abduction of the of any women with intent that she may be compelled or knowing it to be likely that she will be compelled to marry a person against her will and it's not just about marrying it's about forcing her or seducing her to illicit intercourse or knowing the fact that she will be forced or seduced into to illicit intercourse and it just doesn't involve involvement of force it also involves criminal intimidation or abuse of authority for forcing or compelling a woman to marry or forcing her or seducing her into an illicit intercourse or the knowledge of that and its punishment so this is a very technical definition that a lot of people with little or no legal background may not be able to understand so let's break it what exactly is mentioned in section 366 so in the most simple words this section states that any person who has kidnapped or abducted a woman with the intention or the knowledge of the fact that she the woman will be forced or compelled to marry someone or have an illicit intercourse with someone against her will or forces her to go to a place for the same shall be punished with imprisonment of up to 10 years and will also be liable to fine now what is the difference between kidnapping and abduction since both these words were used in the previous section kidnapping as an offense is used for minors it means that only a person who is minor or underage can be kidnapped hence consent of minor is immaterial for offense of kidnapping because minors are not seen as someone who are matured enough to give consent for something that's why their consent is not is not of much material for this and abduction is moving of an adult from one place to another against their will or consent so in abduction consent is an important fact because it deals with uh, adults the means used in kidnapping may be force or enticement that means luring the minor but abduction requires force compulsion or deceit in kidnapping the inten intention of the kidnapper is irrelevant but in abduction the intention which is the guilty mind or the mens rea which is which is used in legal terms of the accused is important for determining the guilt of the accused person what is the meaning of minor or underage any person who is less than 18 years of age is regarded as a minor or an underage person similarly for adult any person who is 18 years or older is considered an adult or a person of age or a major what is the meaning of illicit intercourse because this term was used in previous section and will be used in further in the remaining sections as well so it's important for us to know what it means illicit intercourse means a sexual intercourse between two people who are not married to each other or who are not under any union or a tie which is considered as quasi or almost marital relations according to the personal laws or custom of either one or both people's communities so if you're not married and or engaged or say are deemed to be married or are supposed to be married and you have a sexual intercourse so that is known as that would be termed as an illicit intercourse 
where does the onus of proof or the burden of proof lie? So onus of proof or burden of, before I begin to tell where the onus of proof or the burden of proof lie, this term or this phrase means that who needs to prove that the person or the accused is guilty. So that means that is the meaning of onus of proof. So where does it lie? For section 366, the onus of proof lies on the prosecution to prove that the accused has the, had the intention of forcing the woman to marry someone else against her will or had the knowledge of the same. Same goes for illicit intercourse. So in this case, the prosecution needs to prove that the accused is actually guilty of having the intention or forcing the woman to marry someone else or have an illicit intercourse with someone else. In, sim in simple words, it is innocent until guilty, until guilty, until proven guilty thing that's happening. Now let's move on to section 366A. It is about prosecution, procuration of a minor girl. Whoever by any means whatsoever induces a minor girl, which is who's under 18 years to go from one place or do any act with such, with intent that girl may be or knowingly is to be forced or seduced into illicit intercourse with another person shall be punishable with imprisonment. imprisonment which extend up to 10 years. It means that any person who kidnaps a minor girl with the motive of the no or the knowledge of forcing or seducing that girl into illicit intercourse with another person will be imprisoned for 10 years or less and will also be fined. Se Section 366B is importation of girl from a foreign country. So it states that where it talks about importing a woman or a girl who is not a major, not an adult from a country outside India and forcing her or seducing her into illicit intercourse with another person. And in simple terms, it means that whoever brings or imports any woman who is less than 21 years of age to India from a foreign country with the intention or knowledge of forcing or seducing that foreigner into illicit intercourse with another person will be punished with imprisonment of 10 years or less and will be fined. So the reason why here the age is mentioned as 21 years is that in many foreign countries the age or the coming of age is set at 21 years which means that a person is deemed to be a legal adult at the age of 21 years so that is why they've taken the higher most part of the age and not kept at 18 years section 372 talks about selling minor for purpose of prostitution here my here it's written minor which means that the gender is not specified it holds true for every gender but it focuses more on women or female because they are more prone but all genders male female transgenders who are minors are included in this so whoever sells or lets to hire or otherwise disposes of any person under the age of 18 years with the intent that such person, person shall at any age be employed or used for the purpose of prostitution or illicit intercourse with any person or for any unlawful and immoral purpose or knowing it to be likely that such person will at any age be employed or used for any such purpose shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may extend to 10 years or shall be liable to a fine. There are further explanations where explanation one is talks about about 
what if in specific cases where the minor is a female so when a female under the age of 18 years is sold let for hire or otherwise disposed of to a prostitute or any person who manages a brothel the person so disposing of such fe such females shall until the contrary is proved be presumed to have disposed of her with the intent that she was used for the purpose of prostitution and the second explanation describes the illicit intercourse that was earlier described so what exactly is mentioned in section 372 in the most simple words it states that whoever sells or sends any minor person to someone who manages or owns a brothel for purpose of prostitution or illicit intercourse or for any unlawful or immoral purpose in present or in future will be imprisoned for maximum 10 years and will be fined Section 373 talks about buying minor for purpose of for purposes of prostitution. So again, even in this uh, section, all genders are included. Whoever buys, hires, or otherwise obtains possession of any person under the age of 18 years with the intent that such person person shall at any age be employed or used for the purposes of prostitution or illicit intercourse with any person or for any unlawful and immoral purpose of knowing it to be likely that such person will at any age be employed or used for any purpose that sh shall be punished with imprisonment of either description for a term which may be extended to 10 years and shall also be liable to fine. Explanation one is similar to the ex first explanation of the previous section, with, but just the difference is that instead of selling, it talks about buying. So any prostitute or any person keeping or managing a brothel who buys, hires, or otherwise obtains possession of a female under the age of 18 years shall, until contrary is proved, be presumed to have obtained possession of such female with the intent that she shall be used for purpose of prostitution. Explanation two states the meaning of illicit intercourse. What is mentioned in section 373? Simply, it states that whoever buys, hires, or employs any minor person, irrespective of the gender, for the purpose of pro prostitution, illicit intercourse, or any unlawful or, more, or immoral purpose, in present or in future will be imprisoned for maximum 10 years and will be fine. Where does the onus of proof lie for sections 372 and 373? So unlike section 366, the onus of proof actually lies on the accused that the accused need to prove that they are innocent which means that they did not buy or sell the minors for the purpose of prostitution or illicit intercourse or any unlawful or immoral purposes after being sent or brought by the person who owns or manages the brothel the most important point here is that only if the minors are bought by people who manage or own brothels or sold to people who manage or own brothels does this sec does this ex exception or explanation apply to so if sub for suppose the minor is sold to someone who does not own or manage the brothel or is bought by someone who does not own or manage brothels then the First, then this onus of proof does not lie to that person. So that person is not deemed guilty of prostitution from the beginning, but the prosecution has to prove that that person was actually involved, had actually used those people, those minors for prostitution. So what are the classification of these offenses? These sections are classified as cognizable, non-bailable, and non-compoundable offenses, which have a punishment of up to 10 years of imprisonment and fine, 
the offence can be tried by session courts and the higher courts. What is the meaning of cognizable offence? Cognizable offence means serious offences where police can make arrests without a warrant. So if a complaint is filed upon these sections, the police does not need a warrant to come and arrest such people. What is the meaning of a non-bailable offence? It means that granting of bail is slightly difficult or not possible in such cases. So under non-bailable offence, the bail of the arrest arrested person is a matter of discretion of the court and this discretion of court or all the things that are ne needed to be kept in mind while granting bail or during the bail proceedings of such offenses are listed in the section 300 and 437 of the criminal procedure code and discretion means that only if the court deems fit or thinks it's justified for such accused to be let out on bail will they be granted bail otherwise they will not be granted bail what is the meaning of non-compoundable offense non-compoundable offense means that in such cases the accused and the victim cannot enter in enter into a compromise or out of court settlement and the complaint once ma made cannot be withdrawn so if i make a complaint or if there is a case going on under the non-compoundable offense and i'm like no let me just like compromise and withdraw the case that cannot happen the case cannot be withdrawn the complaint cannot be withdrawn that's it thank you